Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to kind of a unique video that you guys have heavily requested in the past. Actually a month ago you guys requested this. I thought I might as well start off summer by doing a little bit of a life story. Telling you guys my background, where I came from. Kind of funny because I'll, I'll come back to this part of the uh, basement later on. I'm going to be showing you guys pictures on the way through. Here is my life story and hopefully I'm telling you guys about my future inside esports as well. So, hope you guys all enjoy. I'll be showing you some pictures along the way. Hopefully they're not too embarrassing. But let's talk about where I started and I guess where I've come to be. So all of this began a very long time ago. I'll quickly get through my, my, my younger years for all of you guys who are curious. I was a class clown throughout, I guess you could say preschool, you know, kindergarten, also grade school, middle school. I was pretty much the kid who would do anything for attention and oftentimes the things that get you attention and get you in trouble. So I was kind of a troublesome kid and then finally by high school I figured things out. But throughout those middle school years as well, um, I know there's a lot of people out there who like to collect things. They do these things when they're kids that they really enjoy. And for me myself, my hobbies were two things, collecting rocks, which is is seen as kind of a nerdy thing and also collecting coins and currency which is seen as even a nerdier thing so um, two things that were very nerdy to myself but I always had I always had like a, a willingness to go out and collect multiple things of one kind and it wasn't just rocks and coins those are just the two main ones it was also at one point it was bouncy balls it was also arrowheads it was also skeleton keys you don't know what skeleton keys are guys well they're they're very cool and they're now worth way less than they were back in the day but either way the whole thing was I loved collecting things I had a drive to actually earn more of them and so every time I got a weekly allowance or somehow earn money I would put it towards those coins and currencies or put it towards that those other collections so I always had kind of a, a drive to add to my collection and I always thought that was a good thing as a kid to do now moving on towards middle school and grade school of course you know middle school and grade schoolers that's where you get into sports for the first time I was actually into football basketball soccer that kind of thing I wanted I'm very well stressed as well I was never good at these things I did play these sports I just I never could compete I was always I was always worried my parents thought in the stands when I like I shot a three-pointer and it airballed but you know you like as a middle schooler you kind of fake it off like oh just kink in my wrist, but really just suck. And so then came my sophomore year of high school. So I know I kind of fast forwarded there between those sports, but up to this point, I played football for so many years in a row. My dad loved football. He played football in high school, so I thought I should too. And it was actually this point in my, my life, at 16 years old, I decided to quit football, went in to see my head coach, tell him I was quitting football. And you know what sport I picked up instead? I picked up cross country. And again, I think I still think cross country has a stigma of like being like the, oh, the, the wimpy, the lanky kids, they go for cross country. So it was a big transition between going from being like a football player my entire life and I player I was on the bench a lot, but still I was a, a football and I was on the team <laughs> That's all that mattered And so I went to cross country and it was the best decision of my entire life I became a runner have been a runner ever since most recently actually currently today I'm, I'm, I'm still injured so I can't run but I love running guys absolutely love it Best decision of my life was to do track and field and cross country met some of my best friends of all time But it was also during high school where I really found my way not only through finding my friends and I would stress to all of you guys watching do yourself a favor and find a great group of friends who actually of course not only do you agree with what they agree with but also they align with what you want to pursue in life find yourself a great group of friends and you yourself will become a great person I highly live by that I love my high school group of buddies that we still stick together today and they're the kind of friends out there where you don't see them for months on months but when you see them again all of a sudden you're going out to dinner or going out for lunch and you're just best friends again so I love my guys to death and I, I can't I, I can honestly say that was one of the best decisions in my life was to actually choose to go out for cross country instead of football. It was a life-changing decision. But it was also in high school where I found my drive for business. Now this is where the video gets on and where you guys maybe think of, okay, this is where Jake actually clicked on and where he wanted to go to YouTube. So, um, Freshman year of high school, I finally found out I wanted to be in business because it was actually me and my friend Andy. Um, it was me first of all. It was actually throughout middle school. I was selling bouncy balls and erasers and pens in class, and and then throughout high school, I brought that into my freshman and sophomore year. And I was the kid that, that I was probably talked about behind my back so many times because I was so sketch. I was the kid who was going to Costco and buying Starburst and Skittles in bulk, as well as some packs of gum, and I would sell them out of my locker. Now at my high school, very very strict high school, uh, kind of weird how high schools are really strict about gum chewing and that kind of thing, you're not allowed to sell or I guess you're not allowed to resell these things in general without a license. But either way, the high school, it was their fault. They were very, very strict about this. So the entire time I was selling these packs of Starburst and Skittles for a dollar, the margins were so tiny, but I was that kid. You know, if you wanted candy, if you had like a little fix for sugar, you would go to my locker, you hand me $3, I hand you maybe a good deal. Maybe I give you four Starburst or four Skittles for a dollar, which is an amazing steal. Whatever it might be back in the day, whatever it was, 
I was barely making any money, but it was the fact that I was making something, making enough back in my own pocket to pay for my own gum cravings or my own candy cravings was it, it, like it stuck with me forever. And so that led to my, my older businesses. I was actually sophomore and junior year with my friend Andy. We actually, our, our high school had a very good football team. And what we did was we made wristbands and also towels for them to go play football at the state championship. And we actually talked to our school president. After getting done making those, my mom knew a guy who was actually able to print those off. The, we actually ordered the bracelets online. The, the rally towels, what they're called. We actually knew a guy who could make them for us for a cheaper price. After getting all those, all those items, we come back, we sell all those at the school. The school did all the work for us. It was just like, it was, it, everything was coming together. I, I really felt like a business guy for the first time. And that was when I knew going into college, I wanted to go into business, entrepreneurship, whatever it might be. And I chose marketing and management, as many of you guys know. And this is when YouTube was also taking off in my life and it was one of the it was one of the weirdest parts of my life because I knew about YouTube but no one else did. And I don't mean that in a way where like no one no, no one knew what YouTube videos were. I mean like I was doing YouTube videos. This at this point in time I was doing RuneScape videos and a lot of streams. Like I mean a lot of RuneScape streams. And the the weird part was is I knew about it. I was making a decent income doing that and only with a a few subscribers out there in the RuneScape days. I was making you know, pretty decent money for a high schooler and yet no one knew about it. My best friends, my family, no one knew what the heck I was doing playing video games, but it was all it was all kind of coming together because I had just gotten done selling the bracelets and the rally towels and of course I was still selling gum and candy and I, I thought to myself, okay, if I can do this, I can certainly make YouTube work. And this is where it really began to take off. Like I said, I started YouTube back in 2010. That was my freshman year of high school. By the time senior year rolled around, I had already made a few accomplishments in the YouTube scene which I'll show you guys actually came in this room itself. This is actually our weight room here. It's not much of a weight room. That's the wrong door. It's not much of a weight room. Really just have um, this elliptical, which is broken. We used to have a treadmill, which actually broke as well. And then we have the bench right there. And that's really all, you know, we don't really lift that much here because obviously I'm a noodle. But anyway, this is actually the room that I got my first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube on. Yeah, I actually sat this used to have a table right there. I can play you guys the crappy 240p quality clip. I think I have it still. This is actually where I achieved my first thousand subscribers. Hey guys, what's going on? Legit Arts given here with I guess a live webcam video. And so sorry if the video feed or the audio feed is delayed. Um, I just wanted to make this kind of video to actually announce my 1,000 subscriber event. And so please in the comments below right away, let me know if you guys like seeing this type of video. I know, sorry, I'm wearing this like this really cheap microphone. This is my $5 microphone that I use um, for really good audio, I guess you could say. Pretty good audio for $5, what it cost me. And I think from there, a lot of you guys know the progress. It was actually right there I sat when I made the, the best video of my life. It was actually calling out MoTV for CSGO Diamonds and FaZe Clan for their CSGO Wild controversy. It was also at that same exact table I made my worst video ever. And that was, uh, of course, a lot of you guys know the details about that. And I will forever regret that. But this, nonetheless, this is actually the same place just right there, not the table, but also just right there. I used to have my, my first desk, my first RuneScape streams were down here. My first 24 hour RuneScape stream was right there. I duct taped myself to a chair right there. I mean, just so many countless memories through YouTube, through the power of it. And I know that YouTube is certainly different today than what it used to be. I think it's it's probably 10 times harder to make it on YouTube than it was back then. Same goes for Twitch, other services out there. But I, at the end of the day, I cannot tell you guys enough. And it goes to show you, I'm doing this life story video. I'm telling you guys about what has been done in my life so far. And probably 80% of the video has been focused pretty much around YouTube or video games in some sort. And that brings me to my next topic. And that, of course, is my future, as the video says, in esports. I know I told you guys a long time ago I've been applying to jobs inside the esports field, and I guess this, this is my take, this is my opportunity to, to tell anyone out there who is still watching why I think I should, you know, maybe try a role in esports, maybe why I deserve a role in esports, and of course why I'm going to continue to pursue that until something else comes along. So you guys have heard my life story. Of course, I, I just love interacting with people out there. I would love to have obviously have a future in a growing uh, industry like esports, and I think my resume. Uh, being my YouTube channel, my Twitter account, you know, the things I've gone through kind of speaks for itself. 
I love interacting with people. I'm very personable. I love talking to people. And I still certainly am doing that. And I will forever try to do that. Of course, I think there's other routes I can take in business or marketing and management. I feel like my Twitter account, my YouTube channel, my, and everything else in between definitely speaks for my, my ambition when it comes to business. And of course, this, this industry is a business, that being esports. I have a true passion for it. So if any of you guys out there are actually recruiters for some kind of esports uh, scene out there, community manager, uh, social media strategist, I will continue to have this passion until the day I die for esports. I absolutely am in love with the community. I am in love with the thought that this somehow made me who I am. I mean, you guys saw it before. This is, I, I could not be where I am without YouTube, without esports, without video games, and I want to continue to pursue that until the day that I'm off this earth. So um, for anyone out there, I'm Jake. Nice to meet you. And uh, if you'd like to offer me a job in esports, well, I couldn't thank you enough. Or even an interview, a time to talk with you. And uh, mostly, though, this video is for you guys, the loyal viewers out there who have watched Watch me from day one, whether it's day one of RuneScape, day one of CSGO, you guys are absolutely amazing. Um, I, I really can't thank you guys enough. All of your support has brought me to this point in my life. I've graduated college. I've spent the last eight years of my life playing video games pretty much full time. I mean, if, if you would have asked me as a middle schooler, as a grade schooler, hey Jake, would you like to play video games for the next eight years of your life and make money doing it and call it your, your job? I would have said yes in an instant, but I also would have thought there's no way that's possible. But you guys made that possible. I have lived one of the best lives I have ever could have imagined in my last eight years. And so if it's time for me to give up video games, if it's time for me to get a real life job outside of video games, I understand that because I have an opportunity, I've had an opportunity that people would have killed for. And so, you know, whatever happens for future guys, whether this channel goes, you know, whatever route it goes. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. As always, I'll see you guys hopefully tomorrow with some more CSGO news or update videos. And uh, I'll see you guys then.